coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next libgdx tutorial. I know I've been away for a while. I had my computer packed away because I was getting ready to move from Ottawa back to Toronto. Um, so now everything's unpacked and now I'm ready to make some more tutorials for you guys. So in this tutorial we are going to be learning about some animation. So in this tutorial I have the sprite sheet that I generated from Famitsu. Uh, Dot com. I can leave the link in the description below. Just ask for it if I forget to put it in there. Um, so what we're going to do to start off this tutorial is LibGDX has a built-in animation class. And so what we're going to do is create that animation. And we're going to a red squiggly and let's just import this one right here. So we need this imported for it to work. We are going to load in, we need to, our, to load in our texture. We need to have a texture region for our current frame. And then we need to have a two dimensional texture region for our frames. And we need to have a float for frame time. So I know it seems like a lot just to do animation, but it's pretty fluid with the animation class. Now, I know the animation class is a bit limited in some aspects. Sometimes I end up making my own, but for the most part, the animation class can do what you need to do, at least for the most basic tasks. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, sprite sheet is equal to our new texture, and we're gonna load in this texture. So it is, I named it player. PNG and uh, we are going to uh, we're going to set our frames equal to texture region dot split and we're going to put our sprite sheet in there and then we're going to get our sprite sheets with divided by three and we're going to get the sprite sheets height divided by four. So what's going on right now? Cause I know I just kind of rushed into that. Well, let's see how, uh, let's see what happens. Well, texture region dot split, what it does is it returns a two dimension, a text region with, uh, that's a two dimensional array. So we put in our, our text, our, our texture that we actually want to split into multiple increments. And then we need to uh, specify what the what each tile width is and what each tile height is. So if we look at our image right here, um, if we want to get the width of each individual image, we take the whole width of it divided by how much items are in each row. So then we're going to say, okay, there's three. So the width divided by three is going to give us the width, which is 32. So in order to get the height, we take the whole height divided by how much are in a certain column, which is four. So we take uh, the full height divided by four, which gives us 32. So it's 32 by 32 for each individual frame. Uh, so that's what's going on over there. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to say, okay, uh, animation is equal to new animation. And we're going to say uh, 0.10F and we're going to say frames and we're going to put zero. Now what just happened here? So we created a, an animation, a new instance of animation, and in the constructor it takes, it wants us to know how frequently to update the frames and which set of frames we're going to be looping through. So it takes a one dimensional array um, of, of, of a texture region. So what we just did was this. So when we split up, um, sorry, uh, let's go to our image. So when we split this up, this was equal to frames 0, 0, frames 0, 1, frames 0, 2. This one was frames 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, and then so on and so forth. So that's how it worked. So when we specified frame 0, we're specifying that we want to work with row 0. So we want to work with this. If we were to say frames 1, we're working with this row. If we say frames 2, we're working with this one. Frames 3, we're working with this one. So right now, we're just working with the downward animation. Um, and that's all we that's all we're going to specify for right now um, So sorry, I already did this, but let's just retype it. I guess um, So let's say frame time we're gonna say frame time plus equals to delta time So 
we need to update the frames accordingly. So each time delta reaches this value, we're going to update a frame. So we're going to say current frame is equal to animation dot get keyframe and we're going to get the frame time and we're going to set looping equals to true so it's going to continuously loop through the animation so if you set looping to false it's like uh like some instances when you would set looping to false is like when you have like a death animation so you don't want to keep on cycling through the death animation you just want it to the person to die and then the loop is done so, but this one, when we're just doing a walk cycle, we want it to remain true. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say, okay, if current frame dot is flip Y, so if it's not, uh, sorry about that. So if it's not flipped on the Y axis, we're going to say, okay, current frame dot flip false true. Now, the reason why we have to check is that if a frame is already flipped, then it's going to reflip it again, which is not what we want to happen. So last but not least, we're going to say, okay, sprite batch dot draw. Current frame zero, zero. So lastly, sorry, we want to go to our main dot Java in our desktop and we want to change use GL to O to true. Um, cause if we set it to false, we can only use images that are, um, of the power of two. So if your images is not of the power of two, it will not load it in and you will get an error. So we set that to true and this will get rid of this error. There are other ways to get rid of it, but this is the easiest and the best way to get rid of it. So, uh, we got, we run this program and as we can see, we're cycling through this animation right here. So that's great. So we're cycling through this animation. So now let's actually get some um, some keyboard and stuff, some input in there. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're going to make some um, let's make some finals. So we're gonna say final int. Uh, final is constant, just in case you don't know. So we're gonna say uh, down equals zero left equals um, I think it's yep down left right up so this will let us know okay um, which um, which frames set we should use so down is equal to zero left is equal to one right is equal to two and up is equal to three so let's add in some controller input to actually to, to kind of have some fun with this right now okay so we're gonna say okay um, if GDX input is key pressed and we're gonna say keys um, let's use wasd so if um, if the a key is pressed then we're gonna say okay um, sorry uh, we're going to say that um, position dot x uh, minus equals to our move speed, and we're also going to have to have a direction. So we're going to say in direction, and by default, our direction is going to be equal to down. So in here, we're just going to say that our our um our should be move speed times delta. Sorry. So we're going to say direction is equal to left. So we're going to say, oh, I'm sorry for this red squiggly. We just got to import this. And we're going to say, okay, else if GDX input is key pressed keys D position dot X plus equals to move speed times delta and direction equals right. So let's see if this is working right now, okay? So let's see um, if it works for us. So what we gotta do is basically say, okay, so um, we should, yeah, we should make, uh, say, previous direction. And we're going to, at the top of our render, we're gonna say, okay, previous direction is equal to direction. Okay, 
So we're going to say, okay, if direction is not equal to our previous direction, which means we're going in a new direction, then we need to put animation equals new animation and the with the same speed oh, and we're going to say frames uh, direction we also need to reset our frame time if that happens we don't want our animation to be in the middle of a frame or something like that so that's all we have to do so let's test this out to actually see if it works properly so let's say run as We press right, oh sorry, D, and it does the right animation, and voila. So the reason why it's not moving is we didn't set the position here. So let's say position X, position Y. So let's run this one more time. So we got our player moving, and you can always slow on the animation, and voila. So we got the animation with the movement right there. So just to finish this off, we're going to say, okay, if gdx.input, you know what, I'm lazy right now, so let's copy this. So if they press the W key, then position Y minus equals. I don't really like to copy and paste like this because you could oftentimes make mistakes, but um we'll we'll test this out for now so we do that and we're gonna say down so let's run this one more time and voila we're walking through our world so that's it for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it um there are other ways to do animations um, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me if you guys want me to show you another way on how to do animation, I can show you how to do that as well. Uh, but that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe and bye for now.